Downtown Bangkok is home to a group of scientists who use unusual tools to fight infectious diseases, math and computers. It's the mathematical and economic modeling group of the Mahidol Oxford Research Unit, and its mission is to come up with methods to control tropical diseases and to answer crucial questions as how much is it gonna cost? Dr. Lisa White is the head of this group and has no doubt mathematics can even help eradicating malaria. You can't do a trial eradication. You either do it or you don't do it. So the only way to trial an eradication is to simulate it with a computer. So the first question that we ask is, can we reproduce what we observe? So would our model predict what happened in the past? And if the answer is yes, then we go on to try and um, predict how it would go in the future. And we try and answer usually a, a set of what if questions. These can be options like, what if we supply a certain drug or mosquito nets? Every day, a team of Thai and international scientists translate these questions into mathematical language and eventually into lines of code. This allows them to study the epidemiology of dengue fever or other neglected diseases like leptospirosis. But one of their major research focus is a strain of the malaria parasite resistant to our most effective drugs, the artemisinin derivatives. Many of their models are shared with fellow scientists only, while others are free tools for policymakers, like the online malaria elimination model. Basically what we start with is we choose a setting. In this hypothetical setting, 50% of individuals are infected with malaria on average. Now we can try distributing some bed nets. Bed nets can last for about three years, so let's introduce them in 2015 and their effect will pretty much be gone in 2018. And so now you can see that you would expect a reduction in prevalence, but certainly not to zero. The work of this group is highly pragmatic, and the health economist Dr. Joel Lubel plays an important role in assessing if a treatment is cost-effective or not. There is this perception that the health economist is the heartless person who stands up and says, sorry, you might have an effective treatment, but it's not cost-effective, therefore we shouldn't be doing it. That's not at all the case. I think what the health economist tends to do is to be the last port of call that brings together the evidence from many different sources. So both burden of disease, the effectiveness of new interventions, and the costs pursuing different strategies, bringing all this evidence together and then really addressing the question of what is the most sensible thing to be doing at this point. It's just sitting one step behind policymakers, bringing together evidence from many different sources and advising as to what should actually be done. This multidisciplinary approach helps decide in which intervention strategies to use and how to combine them. For this reason, mathematical modeling has the potential to guide and inform government's decisions before funds are committed. But math is not only useful because money matters. With some modifications, these models can be used to fight back sudden outbreaks of diseases, like Ebola in Africa, which could possibly spread to other regions.